Hello and welcome back. This is Jennifer McGuire and today I have a video that is over a year in the making. And this is about the die cut machines that I most recommend. I literally filmed part of this over a year ago and have been experimenting with different machines, different sandwiches, everything over the last year so that I could be sure to bring you the best information. I really tried everything and I'm hoping it's helpful to you. Based on my experience, there are three machines that I would recommend. This includes the quality of the machine, how long they hold up, and customer service. You have seen me use two of these die cut machines many times in videos. However, one of them is new to my videos, but I have been using it religiously off screen to test it out for over a year. Now, I do want to say everyone has a different preference. Everyone works differently. This is just based on my experience because that's really all I have to offer. I tried every one of the specialty cutting plates and die cut machines out there. And I tried them out for a long period of time to really test them. So you can be sure that these are things that have been tried and true. And that's something that's really important, especially with the machine that should last you a long time. Let's face it, there's a lot of information out there, a lot of specialty products, specialty cutting plates. It's hard to sift through it all. However, I'm hoping the information I provide here will be helpful to you. Also, please stay tuned. I will have a video very soon that talks about taking care of your cutting plates, regardless of what machine you use, and also how to resurrect any cutting plates that have been warped really badly. That video will be coming soon, stay tuned. But today is really about the machines themselves and which ones I think give the best results. Okay, let's get started. My first recommendation is for a manual machine. This is one where you crank it yourself with a hand crank. However, I will have electric options for the other two. So stay tuned for that if you're interested. So my first recommendation is a Spellbinders Platinum 6. This is a manual machine, once again, that has a hand crank. It is a high quality machine with a company that has excellent customer service. Now I have used this machine for many years and it has held up wonderfully. However, I bought a new one so I could unbox it in the video and show you what is inside. This is the Platinum 6, which is a manageable size. There is a much larger machine, the original Platinum that is available, that has larger cutting plates, and it is a larger machine. However, I feel like for most crafters, the Platinum 6 is a great option. Right off the bat, you can see some of the advantages of this machine. It is pretty small when folded up, and it doesn't require being plugged in. So it's easy to move around and take from work surface to work surface. I like that the sides of the machine fold up and fold down. So when you're ready to use it, you pull them down. When you're ready to store it, you push them up. So you have a small footprint for the machine. No matter what machine you get, be sure to keep the instruction manual. In fact, I often will cut out pages and laminate them so that I can have them on hand for easy access to make sure that I'm doing the right sandwiches and what they recommend. In here, it makes it very clear what sandwiches to use for die cutting, for making an impression with the die, for doing embossing folders, pretty much everything you would want to know. I will show you some of that today, but it is very helpful to keep this on hand. And in addition to the instruction manual, there are many cutting plates included in the box. And these are all the things you'll need to do the various techniques with this machine. Now the main part of this is the platform. That's the one you see here, it's nice and thick. And it has instructions there on the different sandwiches you'll need with this machine. It's the same that's in the instruction manual, but it's printed on the platform, which is a super helpful feature. I will go through the other things included, but for now, let's just do the regular die cutting plates. You have the platform and two clear cutting plates included. This is all you need to do your basic die cutting. So let's do some die cutting. The first thing you need to do is pull down the sides of your die cut machine and then put the platform on top of it. Again, the platform is that white one that has the instructions printed on it. I'm going to do basic die cutting with a wafer thin die. So I have cardstock and a die from Concord and Ninth. I also have some temporary tape. 
The one you see here was from a year ago and it has been discontinued. I will link to a different one that I use now since that's gone and it is helpful when holding dies in place when die cutting. With this machine on top of the platform you put one of your cutting plates, then your cardstock and your die, and then the other cutting plate on top. You can run that through. If it's an intricate die, you'll want to run it through a couple times and you just use the hand, cr hand crank to get it to go back and forth. You can see this cut beautifully. This machine never fails. It's one of those that always cuts nicely. This one's a pretty intricate die with lots of close cutting lines and you can see it cut nicely. Let's do another. Here is a background die. I have my platform, a clear cutting plate, cardstock, the die face down, and another clear cutting plate, and I'll run that through. I always keep the clear cutting plate that's clean on the top. That way it doesn't leave any marks on my paper. Notice I'm going back and forth a few times with this one. That's because it's super intricate with lots of detail. It did cut beautifully, and I used a weeding tool to get all those die cuts out. That's one of the nice things about a high quality die cut machine is it'll cut beautifully and all those pieces will pop out. With this machine, there are two clear cutting plates that are exactly the same, but I try to keep them a little bit different. See the one on the left? It has a lot of cut marks in it. The one on the right is perfectly clear. The one with the cut marks is the one that goes on top of the platform and our dies cut into it. The clear one on the right I keep on top so it always looks nice and doesn't leave any impressions on our cardstock. Eventually when the cut up one is really worn out I can replace it with the clean one and that way I can make sure it keeps cutting nicely. I will say with the Spellbinders Platinum I have never had an issue with warping. So let me show you the sandwich that I use for my basic die cutting and I hope this is helpful to you. On the bottom, starting at the bottom here, we have the platform. That's the thick one with the instructions. On top of that, I have my rough, clear cutting plate, the one we cut into. Then my paper. Then the die face down, the wafer thin die. Then the clean, clear cutting plate on top. And that's what I run through. And I have found that this works really well with the platinum. If you have a tricky, intricate, hard to cut die, you can always use a metal adapter plate. And I'll link to the one that I recommend. However, I rarely do this. I find that if I just run a die back and forth, it should be good to cut through. But sometimes there's those tricky dies. And in that case, I put my metal adapter plate between the platform and my rough clear cutting plate. Then I put my paper, my die face down, and then the clean, clear cutting plate on top of that. This is totally up to you if this is something you need. You could always use a cardstock shim instead of the metal adapter plate, but I do find it ha handy to have for your die cutting. And there you can see this cut beautifully once again. Now let's talk about embossing folders with the Platinum 6. This is tricky because since I filmed this, there have been so many new embossing folders that have come out. There are regular embossing folders and there are 3D embossing folders and every company seems to be a little bit different in their thickness. So it's really hard to give a universal sandwich for embossing folders. You have to experiment. So I'll first go with a basic embossing folder which tend to be a little thinner than the 3D embossing folders. This is what's usually in the instruction manual of your machine. Now for a thin traditional embossing folder, I put my cardstock in the folder, put that on top of the platform, and then the blue embossing plate on top of that. This plate comes with the machine. And then I run that through and that gives a nice impression. Again, this is with the traditional thin 2D embossing folders. With some of the thicker 3D embossing folders, this is a sandwich that I found worked best. Cardstock in the embossing folder, put it right on top of the platform, and then one clear cutting plate on top of that. This goes through, you can see it's a little tough, you don't want to force it, but this does go through. Again, with these 3D embossing folders, you're going to need to test it. See what works best. A lot of times in videos, I will talk about what works best for that particular embossing folder, but everyone is different. 
Here's yet another. This is kind of in between. In this case, I found the platform, a metal adapter, the embossing folder, and then the cutting plate on top was the right sandwich. So I love all the new embossing folders coming out, but unfortunately that means that every sandwich will be different. You need to test it, not force it through, and figure out what gives the best results with your machine. Keep in mind, many of the companies who make embossing folders will have in their product description the sandwich for different machines. Okay, now let's talk about dry embossing. This is where you use a die that normally cuts, but use it to make an impression on your cardstock instead. The Spellbinders is great for this. It comes with this tan embossing mat. You can see it's very flexible. That way when you use it, the die makes an impression on your cardstock instead of cutting it. This is a tried and true technique that people have been using for many years, and I think Spellbinders was one of the trailblazers of it. What I do is the main platform in your die cut machine, then the tan embossing mat, then your cardstock, and on top of that, your die face down. So cutting edge face down to the cardstock. But because we put that tan embossing mat in there, this die will not cut. It will instead make an impression and it's super cool. On top of that, I put that blue embossing mat that comes with the machine. Again, all of these pieces come or plates come with the machine. So I run that through and watch. The cardstock will have this really cool impression instead of being cut. This is a great way to extend the life of your dies. And the Spellbinders machine comes with what you need. So the Spellbinders Platinum 6 is the machine that I most recommend that is manual. One that you don't plug in and you just turn the crank to do your die cutting. It's high quality, the company has great service, and it holds up over the years. Again, if you're interested, there is a bigger version of this. I don't find any disadvantages to this machine other than you have to turn the crank yourself. I also feel that it's very important to mention that for the past few years, the Spellbinders company has been incredibly supportive of the industry, designers, and other companies. I think that says a lot, and you'll get great customer service. Okay, let's now move on to the next die cut machine that I recommend, and this is the Gemini Junior. This machine and my next recommendation are electric machines. So you just push a button and the plates move through on their own. The Gemini Junior is one that I have used for many years and I use it a lot in videos. However, I bought a new one so I could show you what currently comes in the box. Now when I say currently, I did shoot this almost a year ago. So there may be a few different things in the box. You wanna check that out, but this is the basics of what you get. Keep in mind that I'm sharing the Gemini Junior version. There is a traditional Gemini that is much bigger and has bigger cutting plates. But I think for most crafters, the Junior version is the best option. Now in my box, I got some dies that I can test out and also an embossing folder. This may be different now since this was uh, filmed quite a while ago, but the plate should be the same. All the plates that you need for this die cut machine are included in the box. You can see there are many different things here, and there is the instruction manual that shows how to use them. Once again, I recommend keeping this, maybe laminating the pages, so you can easily reference the sandwiches they recommend. Please note that I recommend doing my plates a little bit differently. If you want the warranty and to follow what they do, look at the instruction manual. I change things up slightly so that they work better and I've never had any problems. The plates included in the box are two clear cutting plates. Then there is a plastic shim, a magnetic shim, a metal shim, and an embossing shim. Although these come with the machine, you can get replacement plates of all these different things separately. So they are available separately. Same with the Spellbinders Platinum I showed you earlier and the machine I show you later. I do want to note that this is the magnetic shim. It is printed white on both sides with a black grid. However, it is a magnetic shim. If you have an older Gemini, it's solid black like you see on the right. These are both magnetic shims, they're the same thickness, so yours may look a bit different than mine. Let's take a look at the machine itself. I have the dimensions up there on the top of the screen, and it does plug in because it is an electronic machine. 
There are little handles indented on the side so you can quickly pick it up and move it. There is an on-off switch on the back also. To turn it on, you press the main power button. So you can see it goes on and off. You know it's on when it's lit. There is also a forward and reverse or pause button. I never use those. I just use the machine with the power button on, feed my plates through, and it works fine. But those other buttons are there if you need them. Here is a look at the instruction manual that comes with the machine. Again, please keep it for reference. In it, it has very clear description of the sandwiches to use for whatever you want to do, including cutting a die, cutting an intricate die, making an impression with a die, also uh, using embossing folders. It's all there and very clear. I do change things up, keep that in mind, but if you want to follow the rules, that is all included in the instruction manual. Now the cutting plates for this machine are very close in size to that we saw with the Platinum 6, which is about six by nine. Now just to cut with a regular wafer thin die, you start with a clear cutting plate, then you put your cardstock on top. Then you put your wafer thin die, and you can tape it in place if you want to so it doesn't move. Then you take your magnetic shim. On top of that, you put the plastic shim, which is this white plastic looking piece. Then finally, you put another clear cutting plate on top of that. Now you can put the sandwich through like this, or you can flip it over. Really, I found you could do it either way. Here, I'm just gonna put it through as is, and when it comes through the other side, it'll be cut beautifully. The nice thing about this machine is it captures the plates and pulls it through. You don't need to tell it to feed the plates through, and you don't need to push anything afterwards. You just put the plates in, it automatically grabs it and pulls it through. So here we can see how that cut through beautifully. Absolutely no problems at all. So I always keep the clear cutting plate that's at the bottom, the one that I cut into, always is the same. So it'll get kind of messy over time, but if I keep rotating it and flipping it, I'll have no problem. Same with the Platinum 6 that I showed you earlier. Remember on the other side of the sandwich is another clear cutting plate. I never cut into that one, so it stays, stays nice and crisp. That way later when this one gets all cut up and beat up, I can switch with this one and replace the top one with the clear plate. Again, all replacement plates are available, even the magnetic shim and the plastic shim. Now let me show you one variation of this. Only one thing changes. I'm starting with my clear cutting plate, my cardstock, and my wafer thin die facing down. On top of that, I put my magnetic shim then that white plastic shim and the other clear cutting plate. The same as before, but this time I'm flipping the entire sandwich over and feeding it through my die cut machine. This seems to do a bit of a better cut, usually in most die cut machines, if you put the die facing up. It does recommend doing that in the instruction manual, so I wanted to show that to you. But it is the same exact sandwich. I just flipped it over before putting it through my machine. So keep that in mind if you have a die that's not cutting well, that may help you out. But do stay tuned to my next video where I will talk more about getting better cuts and making your plates last longer. One important note, remember how I said that the magnetic shim used to be all black and now it has the white printing on both sides with the black grid. Well, since it changed to the white printing on both sides, I find that it doesn't hold up as much. It seems to warp more over time. So I made a few changes based on that to try to make my plates last longer. I did a video on this topic. If you haven't seen it before, I'll link to it here. But this helps to prevent plate warping. It also helps to prevent warping of that newer magnetic shim. And it's just easier to use the plates together. This is how I always use my Gemini die cut machine. So let me show you the process that the video I linked to goes into deeper detail. The first step is to trim down the magnetic shim a bit. So this is full size like the others, but I find that it stretches a little bit over time and it actually does better if you trim a little bit off the sides. So I cut about a quarter of an inch off of all four sides. You could skip this step, but I found it really does make quite a bit of difference. 
Another change I make is the order of the plates in my sandwich. I change from what's in the instruction manual, and what I do is one clear cutting plate, which I never cut into, then our trim down magnetic shim, and then the plastic shim. So in this case, the magnetic shim and the plastic shim are swapped in their spots. I tape these plates together with some heavy duty packing tape. The reason I tape them together is then you don't have to fuss with as many plates when you're doing your die cutting. Also, it just seems to help protect that magnetic shim so it doesn't warp over time or get stretched out. So I put the strong packing tape on all four sides. And then once I have it on all four sides, I do use a bone folder to really rub it in place. And this is how I use my plates for die cutting. Now, if you want to do an embossing folder or emboss with a die, I have extra uh, clear cutting plates that I use for that. I always keep extra replacement plates on hand in case something happens to mine. And eventually you just need to replace it due to wear and tear. But I have found this trick works great for me. I know many of you have tried it and had success too. If you didn't have success with doing this, I will talk about that a bit more in my next video. So this is how I use this sandwich. I have my clear cutting plate. It's on the work surface there. It's kind of hard to see. I'm putting my cardstock on that and then a die face down. My die always cuts into that messy cutting plate. I then put my new sandwich the pieces that are the plates I taped together, put that on top and then flip it and feed it through my machine. This is the regular Gemini here, but it works with the Junior too. So now you can see how this cuts really well. So basically I taped three of my plates together and now I only have the one clear cutting plate that I cut into and then that sandwich taped together plate. It makes it so much easier for me. Now this isn't following the rules of the instruction manual, so please keep that in mind, but I've never had any problems with it, and I find that my plates last much longer. That clear cutting plate, I still do rotate back and forth and flip it around when I'm using it, and the sandwich on the top that I tape together, I seem to be able to use it either way, the clear cutting plate on top of the die or the plastic shim. It really helps with saving time when you're die cutting to have those sandwiches taped together. Okay, so this is what I do. This is the sandwich that I use. Mine happen to be taped together, but you don't have to. I have the rough clear cutting plate on the bottom. Then I have my paper. Then the die face down. Then the plastic shim, the magnetic shim, and then the clear cutting plate. And yes, I tape those top three together. Now, because the magnetic shim is behind the plastic shim, it doesn't serve as a magnet to hold the die in place. But that's okay with me because I found it wasn't really strong enough to hold it, so I just use tape with my die and the paper. So this is the sandwich that works for me and has allowed me to use my machine more and not have the warping issues. Okay, let's next talk about embossing folders with the Gemini Junior. You should be able to use all embossing folders in this machine. The sandwich again will change depending on the thickness of the embossing folder, as I mentioned earlier with the Platinum. Here we have a traditional thin embossing folder. I have a clear cutting plate, then my embossing folder with the cardstock, then a magnetic shim and another clear cutting plate. And I'll feed those through my machine. This seems to work just fine. And again, the machine grabs the plates and pulls it through. You don't need to press a button as long as your machine is on. And there you can see you get a great embossed image. Now, once again, those 3D embossing folders all have different thicknesses. So you have to follow the instruction manual or test it out. For this particular one, I found a sandwich of the plastic shim, then the metal shim, then the embossing folder with the cardstock, and then one clear cutting plate on top did the trick. So you're going to have to test it out, look at your instruction manuals, look at the manufacturer of the embossing folders, see what they recommend. But you're able to use most embossing folders with this machine also. Now you can also do dry embossing with this machine and everything you need does come with the machine. Now for the dry embossing, remember you use like a flexible plate so that you can make an impression with your die instead of cutting. For this, I use the clear cutting plate, then the plastic shim, then this flexible purple piece. Then I put down a piece of cardstock, then my die with the cutting edge face down, 
and then another clear cutting plate and I run that through. I find this does do a great job making an impression. It's not as deep as the impression made by the Platinum 6, but that's because I think this uh, purple embossing mat is a little thinner than the tan. However, you could buy that tan embossing mat separate and use it in your Platinum. That's what I'm doing here. I have a clear cutting plate, the Spellbinders tan embossing mat that I bought separately, my cardstock, my die face down, and then the metal shim. And then finally a clear cutting plate. And I feed that through. And that gives a little bit of a deeper impression. It's not much of a difference, but it is something to note. So in all, I find the Gemini Junior to give a great cut. It cuts even the most intricate dies. The only disadvantage I would say is that there are multiple plates and sometimes they warp. And that is why I tape the plates together as I showed you. However, my next video, I will share some tips to try to avoid that. So it is a great die cut machine option. And keep in mind, there is a larger version of the Gemini if you are interested. Okay, let's move on to my third and final die cut machine recommendation for today. It is another electric machine and one that I have been using a lot over the last year, but never shared in a video. It is the Anna Griffin Impress die cut machine. Now, the trick with this is there are only really a couple places where you can buy this machine, and I will link to them below. I happened to get uh, a couple of mine on HSN. I just bought this new one so that I could show you what currently comes in the box, and I just filmed this a few days ago. I have the regular size impress machine. They do have a larger version, I believe, and a mini version, but I find this one works really well and you can use the mini in large plates in it, which I'll show you at the end. It has this handle that flips up so it's easy to move from place to place. Of course, it does plug in and here you can see where the plates go in on the front and the buttons that are on the top. The buttons for this are on, run, and reverse. Now for this one, you do have to push run in order for the plates to go through, which I'll show you. Now included in the box are all the different plates. We have two A clear cutting plates. We have a D metal shim. Then there is the magnetic shim, which is the B one there. It's really thick compared to the others. And here is the other A clear cutting plate. Then there is also the embossing mat. So if you want to make an impression with the die, that is included. So everything you need is here. And usually the machine comes with some dies and embossing folders to get you started. And I'll actually use one of those embossing folders today. The instruction manual with it is nice and compact. It's very easy to follow. It shows you exactly what you need to do for different situations, including cutting, using an embossing folder, making an impression with the die, and more. So be sure to keep your instruction manual on hand. It's very handy if you kind of forget what sandwiches to do. I will say I use the instruction manual as it says. I don't change any of the sandwich. It works great and I haven't found a need to. One of the big differences about this machine is the magnetic shim is very thick. It's almost as thick as the cutting plates, which really makes it stand up over time. Okay, so let's do some basic die cutting here. I have a lawn fawn die that's pretty intricate, so let's go ahead and do basic die cutting. I have one of my clear cutting plates, and then I put my cardstock on that, and then the die face down. I always cut into the same cutting plate. Then I put my magnetic uh, shim down, the magnetic mat. You can have it up, white side up or black side up, it really doesn't matter. And then the other clear cutting plate. And then usually I flip that over and put it right through my die cut machine. Now to get the gut die cut machine to work, you turn it on. And then you take your plates and put them in and hit run. You need to hit run for it to start going and to grab those plates. But it's really easy to do. You can put your plates through like this or sideways. The instruction manual shows this, but I've done it both ways and never had a problem. And you can see how that cut really nice. So the nice thing about this one, like the Spellbinders, is there aren't many plates to deal with. You just have, with this one, the two clear cutting plates and the magnetic shim. And that's all you need for your basic die cutting. There is a magnetic shim that you can put in there too if you have an intricate die, but honestly, I've never done that. 
I find if I have a really intricate large die, I just run it through the machine two or three times and it cuts no problem. But for your basic dies or even intricate ones like this, I only need to do it one time and it really cuts nicely. It's a very handy machine, it's not too loud, and I like that the plates can go through straight or sideways. So the opening on this die cut machine is a little bit bigger. Now the plate size is a little bit different than the others, so you can't use these plates with the other machines, but I like the size of these. I like that's a little wider. I also rotate these plates just like I do with the others. So I flip that clear cutting plate around. I flip the magnetic shim around. I think that's always a good thing to do with your dies because you don't want wear to continually be in one spot because that does lead to a higher chance of having warp issues. However, I will say I have used this machine exclusively off screen and really off screen in my videos too over the last year and I've never had an ounce of warping. So here are my first plates that I use with this machine and I do this for my mass production. There's my clean cl cutting plate, perfectly flat. Here is my magnetic mat. Now you can see it's kind of warped in shape, but it hasn't bubbled. It kind of stretched in shape, but it hasn't warped and become like bumpy at all. So this one was a previous version where it wasn't white on one side. And then here's my cutting plate. Look at that. I mean, it is worn, but absolutely no warping with it. This is an excellent machine and I'm I'm really wanted to give it a thorough test over the last year and I was kind of hoping it would be available in more places uh, but still I only seems to be available at the two locations I linked to below. Now as I mentioned there are other cutting plates other size cutting plates you can get for the impress. Now these are meant for the bigger and smaller machine but I actually use them in this one. So these are the mini plates. They're about half the size of the regular plates. And if I'm doing mass production of a small die and I don't want to cut a bunch of things at once, I'll use this and I'll feed it through. That way the plates go through the machine faster. But honestly, I don't use these on my regular crafting that much. I just use the regular plates. I only have these mini ones for when I'm doing mass production. So they actually stay upstairs and aren't in my craft room. But here you can see how they can be go through sideways or the long ways and they feed through pretty quickly. Now, in addition, there are the larger plates that are meant for the larger machine. And these are great when you have like those long slimline dies instead of having to run through one half of the die, then run through the other half, you can do all of it at once. You can also bulk die cut with this, which I have done a few times. But again, I usually reach for the regular size that comes with the machine. And here you can see there is no warping, even with these large plates, and you can see I've used them quite a bit. So that's something to keep in mind. Another thing I thought I should mention, the magnetic shim, I think because it's so thick, is super strong. So it does hold your dies in place nicely. Okay, so here is the sandwich that I use and it isn't any different than what is in the instruction manual. On the bottom, I have my rough clear cutting plate that I always cut into and I rotate. Then we have the paper, then the die face down, then the magnetic mat, and then my clean clear cutting plate. And I usually flip this entire sandwich over when I run it through, but it really doesn't matter. So this will give you a beautiful cut every time. And I tell you, I don't have any problems with this machine. Okay, now I know folks are gonna ask about using embossing folders with the Impress, and it's just as easy as the others. You just follow the instruction manual in either the Impress machine box or in the uh, description of the embossing folder on a manufacturer site, because again, all embossing folders are different thicknesses. Well, this machine actually came with an embossing folder, so I thought I'd go ahead and use that. So I put the cardstock in and check out how easy this is. You put it between the clear cutting plates, the two cutting plates it comes with, and just run that through and you get a beautiful impression. Now, I'm not sure if I mentioned it yet, but there are replacement plates available for this machine, just like the others. Uh, replacement magnetic mats, everything is available separately. I do recommend no matter what machine you get, go ahead and get replacement mats. You have some on hand in case something happens. And you know, eventually you use them because there will be normal wear and tear on mats. I have tried all of the different um, self-healing mats and I really haven't found that they hold up 
longer term than the regular cutting plates. They may work great for a while, but they don't hold up much longer. So I always end up going back to the plates that the machine was designed with. Okay, so here I did a thicker embossing folder, a 3D, and I just experimented until I realized that one clear cutting plate, the embossing folder, and the magnetic mat was exactly what I needed to get a good impression with this one. So again, you're going to have to try it out and do a little research for th with each of the folders, but you have to do that with any of the machines. Okay, so next up is dry embossing. This is, again, where you can make an impression with your die instead of cutting with it. And I find that the embossing mat that this comes with is very much like the Spellbinders Platinum embossing mat, and it does an excellent job. So here I have my first clear cutting plate. Then I put down that embossing mat, then my cardstock, then the die face down, and then the other clear cutting plate. When you run that through, you'll end up with a beautiful impression. Very easy and a great way to stretch the life of your dies. Okay, so there are three machines in my video and I know folks are gonna ask, which one would I recommend the most? Here's the thing, it really depends on what you're looking for. But if you're looking for a manual machine that doesn't plug in, definitely the Spellbinders Platinum. If you're looking for an electric machine, I would recommend the Impress. Unfortunately, it's hard to get Again, I think only two places really have them, but I do find it to be a really great investment. I haven't had any problems with wearing of plates. It just seems to work really, really well. I do have luck with the Gemini, and I will share how to make your plates last longer in that next video, but again, it is a great machine too. All right, there's a lot of information. Now I know I'm gonna forget something or get a lot of questions. So I will have a pinned comment below in YouTube. I really encourage you to check that after watching this video to see if there's any updated information. Please remember that I did purchase these machines and I really tried them out. So I'm sharing what I feel to be true about the best die cutting machines. Also, I know that Spellbinders has excellent customer service. I found Gemini does also. I haven't had to try the customer service of the Impress machine, but I'm hoping that they do too. I will have that other video that I talk about coming very soon, hopefully within the next week, but I will link it here once I have it up so you can refer back to here to find it easily. Thanks so much for watching. I do link to everything I talk about in my YouTube description below. You can also check here in the middle for two other die cutting videos that may be helpful. Thanks so much for watching. Have a wonderful day and we'll see you soon.